Lord, lead us as we share, as we study your word, uh, that we'll be able to learn and know how to surrender our lives to you. Amen. Today I'm going to be sharing from the theme, Surrender All. At the church house where I live, I stay with a couple of youth. And in this season of lockdown, we really had a lot of fun because we had lots of games to play. One of the games we were playing was draft. And in this game, when you are playing with your opponent and you realize that you have fewer buttons and they have more or buttons or pieces and they even have a king or even more than one king, you surrender because you know your chances of winning are very few. Or even in an army, an army surrenders when they know that their enemy um, has more, more soldiers than they do or if they are caught up in an ambush. It is Cambridge Core that records and says that um, s uh, s the act of surrender indicates the surrendering party has, has given in to defeat and the opposing force has victory or is victorious. So surely about surrendering, there is a concept in it of accepting defeat, accepting that you cannot do something. So from our passage today, Mark chapter 10, verse 23 to 31, we want to answer some questions. Who or to whom do we surrender? And why do we surrender? And what does it mean to surrender all? Mark chapter 10, verse 23 to 31 says, Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were amazed at his words. Jesus said again, Children, how hard it is um, to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were even more amazed and said to each other, who then can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, with man this is impossible, but not with God. All things are possible with God. Then Peter spoke up and said, we have left everything to follow you. Truly I tell you, Jesus replied, no one who has left home or brothers or sister or mother or father or children or fields for me and the gospel will fail to receive a hundred times as much in this present age. Homes, brothers, sisters, mothers, children and fields along with persecutions and in the age to come eternal life. But many who are first will be last and the last would be first. And so from this passage we learn that we surrender all to Jesus because we cannot earn life for ourselves. In verse 23, Jesus says it is hard for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. In verse 25, he goes on ahead to use a more extreme illustration to say that it is easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. If it were for the Persians, they will use an expression like it is easier for an elephant to go through an eye of a needle. And then for the Bachiga, for us we would say that now who was in Nira Ahampiti Dizo. If it was a Muganda, would say, now was in Nira Kumpiso, which means that even if you danced on a needle. And so we see that in history, scholars have tried to ease in this expression. Some have came up and said that the eye of a needle was simply a gate in Jerusalem that was opened in the night when the main gate was closed. However, through research we've seen that there's no proof for this gate being there or this interpretation being right. Some have also said that there's been a misspelling for two words. There are two words, camelos and camelos. And camelos would stand for a large rope and then camelos would stand for the camel. And so some would be saying that maybe they were meaning a big rope, that it's easier for a camel to go through a big rope. But however, there's still no proof for this. And so Jesus is simply saying that it is hard. It is not possible for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Why are the disciples amazed? In verse 24 we are told that they were amazed and in 26 they are even more astonished and more amazed because they held that the rich were the people that are more close to the kingdom of God. The rich were people with divine blessing because they had money. They had it all to give to the poor, to the needy and to give alms. But Jesus is surprising them, telling them that it is not possible for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. And it is just to mean that it is impossible for someone to earn themselves eternal life because it is all the work of God. What is impossible with man, all things are possible with God. Is it then wrong uh, to have riches? 
I think not, but your your attitude toward the riches would be the problem. Like from the passage that we studied last week, Mark 10, 17 to 22, we see that this rich young man refused to let go of his riches and he held on to them instead of holding on to Jesus. And we know that there are many people today that hold on to their possessions, thinking that they would find security in them, they would find their trust in them. You may not even be having a lot of riches or you may not have attained them but the way you perceive and pursue riches could show that you have your trust and all your security in riches and so that means you'd also equally be the same like this rich young man it may also not even be riches it could be about your knowledge it could be about your skill it could be about your loved ones friends and family the way you hold on to them if you hold on to them as your trust and security you miss the point too because these things are all passing away they cannot earn you eternal life it's Jim Elliot who said that it is not a fool he who gives what he cannot keep to earn what he cannot lose our pastor has always told us a story Pastor has told us a story of when he went to do evangelism he came to a lady a young lady and preached to her and asked her to receive Jesus Christ as his number one in life the woman responded to Pastor saying that if I make Jesus my number one, what will my husband be? The one that provides me food and security and all that I need. So simply the lady was clearly rejecting Jesus as her number one. But in a few months, we are told that this lady had, had a husband pass on, the husband that was her number one passed on. I don't know how many things that we have held on in life that are simply passing away. It's uh, David E. Garland that says that to have life, one must give up the quest to create one's own, uh, to create one's own security. For you to have life, you need to give up for yourself to earn security. And then... Second, we would answer the question, after knowing that we need to surrender all because we cannot earn life by ourselves, why then, or what does it mean then to surrender all? It simply means to surrender or to give up everything. For the rich man who had refused and had held on to his riches, uh, Peter responds in verse 28 saying that we have left everything to follow you. And Jesus continues to highlight what is this everything that they had left. He says they gave up homes, they gave up families, they gave up fields, all for the sake of the gospel and Jesus. And he promises them and says that not this he promises them and says that they would not miss to receive a hundred times more than what they have lost in the present age with persecution though, but also in the age to come, eternal life. David Garland has interpreted this passage saying that um, for those that have become homeless will find a, a home among those who receive them. And those that have surrendered their families will be part of a greater family, not based on biological kinship. And those that have left their fields will, will even be given greater fields of mission opportunity. Like Matthew 9.36 says that the harvest is much, but the laborers are few. We also see this picture of surrendering all in, in the life of the father of those who have faith, Abraham, at a hundred years of age and his wife at 90 years God asked him to surrender the only son that he had Isaac we see that it's the time when he had just sent Ishmael away into the wilderness he didn't hesitate it was painful but he was ready to sacrifice his only son till that time when Jesus, when God offered him a sacrifice and this is the kind of surrender we are talking about we are called to surrender everything to Jesus our families our possessions our life even those parts in our lives that are not known to anybody but are known to us because they're not going to earn us any life here. We know that we see people that are saying their vows at marriage say that I give you my everything and the other one says I also give you my everything. But we see it that in, in, in spouses that some have still held to their phone passwords. Even their ATM pin codes are only left to them. They don't share them with their spouses because they have insecurity and mistrust in them. But Jesus is saying that we are to surrender everything. We are to surrender all unto him. Bless us security and our trust in him alone. However, we know that some false teachers could use this same passage to manipulate people, to tell you that you need to give everything and when you are giving it, you are only building for them palaces and kingdoms here on earth. But if we are to give, we are only to give 
what we give to build the kingdom of God. What place are you called to give to? If God compels you to give, you should give to a ministry that you know is a ministry that gives accountability for its collections. At our church, we always have a business business meeting every year to give an accountability of how we've used our funds and so that's that should be a picture in the church because it's a biblical principle we are all going to give an account we've sung this song i surrender all but the truth is that we've not surrendered our lives as i finish i ask us to surrender our everything to god because all that we have here is passing away god bless you